So it's possible to, to give highly detailed representations of the sounds that occur in speech. And so we, when we do that, we can call them narrow transcri transcriptions or phonetic transcriptions. And what they do is to show the phonetic detail in as much as faithfully as possible. So let's take the word the words got and geese. Do they begin with the same sound? Sure, they begin with the same sound in some sense, but if you really go and look at what exactly is being produced, if you look at the physical stimuli, you put it in a, into a machine that measures this stuff and displays it, what you see is that, in fact, they're different. Pronounce the word got, feel where your tongue is, and then pronounce the word geese and feel where your tongue is. So got, geese. The natural place to put the tongue for geese is much farther for, forward. So there's some, the tongue goes up and touches the, the roof of the mouth in some place. With got, it's at the velum. With geese, it's at the palate. And so we, we have um, different IPA transcriptions for those different, those different pronunciations. The little superscript J indicates palatalness. So y is a palatal consonant. That's the, the representation here shows palatality or the fact that the, the g sound is being pr pronounced actually on the palate. Let's take the words bar and ra. Do they, does bar end with the same sound that ra starts with? Well, yes, in some sense, but if you really go and look closely at it, the pronunciation of the R in Ra involves protrusion of the lips, Ra, in a way that the pronunciation of that same sound in Bar doesn't. So it has to do with the placement of this sound. If it's at the beginning of a syllable or a word, as in the case of Ra, then there's lip protrusion rounding and um, otherwise there isn't. So the lip rounding or lip protrusion, the lip action can be represented with the superscript W because W, W, that sound involves lip protrusion of much the same kind. So notice that when um, children are are young and they're learning the English language, they're beginning to acquire all of the sounds, they will substitute what sound for R when it occurs at the beginning of a word or syllable. They'll substitute W because R and W are very similar sounds, for which reason we have this cartoon. Remember this cartoon? You know this cartoon about um, Bugs Bunny where there's a character, Elmer Fudd, who's a farmer who's chasing Bugs Bunny all the time, and he calls him what? Calls him the rascally wabbit. Rabbit, rascally, those sounds are very similar because of the because of the tongue placement, which is which is similar, as well as the lip protrusion or rounding. So the W there and that and that transcription is an accurate representation of the exact pronunciation. With long and log, is it the same vowel? Well, in a way, just like the two R sounds are the same, but um, actually there is nasalization of the vowel in long because of the fact that that word ends with the ng nasal consonant sound. So it's long, starts out as long, as a nasalized vowel and then ends with long, I've already talked about this, the nasal consonants um, stimulate nasalization of a vowel, whereas log begins as la and it's not going to ever end in an N if you start out or an ng or an M if you start out with la. You have to start out with long with nasalization of some kind. And in these words, nine and ninth, it looks like all you do is add th to ninth, 
to get that uh, to to make that happen. So start out nine and then add the. But actually, in general, most people when they're pronouncing these pronouncing the word ninth, they don't put their tongue on the alveolar ridge to make an N before they go into the interdental fricative. So th has the tongue tip in between the teeth, where we've got it, we know we've got an N sound coming up. We probably can just make it be the case that people are going to hear an N sound by virtue of nasalizing the vowel. Nine, 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 and then ninth. I can put my tongue right in between the teeth at the point that I make the nasal consonant sound, which is very brief, and then go right into the uh, dental or interdental fricative, voiceless fricative sound. So the technical terminology here, what's going on here, is that there are basic sound categories that matter for the language. So those are the things that have, those are the, the sounds in that stream of speech that we segment off and that have features that we pay attention to because they matter for meaning. And so th and th are different sounds because they make that kind of a difference, as are r and l in English, but not necessarily in other languages. And for, the same for all of these sounds here. In some languages, these distinction, the distinction th and the matters. In other languages, they might have both the sounds, but it doesn't matter at all. So the basic sound categories, the ones that make a difference in meaning are called the phonemes. And those are represented as <clears throat> represented with um, slashes or angled brackets for um, the, the phonemes are. So there's a phoneme th that you get in teeth, for example, as opposed to the phoneme th that you get in teeth, the, the verb, for example. And then, so the same thing holds for all of these other sounds. So there's a contrast between R and L. R, L, S, and SH, as in sip and ship. Um, and uh, the same thing for all of these other sounds. For the cases that we were looking at where we had narrow transcriptions, um, what we have is allophones of the same phoneme. So alveolar N and dental N are different versions of the same basic category. So when there are Minimal pairs like teeth and teeth, far and fall, sip and ship, then we know that we've got that those sounds are different phonemes. But in cases like g and g, where, you know, if you say them um, out of context, we can hear that there's a difference, but it's not going to make any difference in the language. People don't even perceive that. They just, it just blows right by them because those are different versions of. That's a different version of g, or those are different versions, right? And the same thing goes for um, the two versions of R. So those are said to be allophones or variants, predictable variants, contextually predictable variants of the same sound. 